Miguel, and you will tell them the word of the Lord. Everything, all things are now ready. And as you tell them, I believe they will come. I said they will come. You will come and they will come. You will participate and the blessings of the Lord will be upon every one of us in Jesus' name. Point number three, participation of saints and sinners in the great gathering. Participation of saints and sinners in the great gathering. Number one, the provision of sufficient supplies by God. Let's come back to this Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14, we're looking at verse 16 and verse 17. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many. That's what bade means, he invited many. He wanted many people to come. In verse 17, and he sent his servant at supper time to say unto them that were bidding, Come. For all things are now, what? Ready. I want you to notice that is very important. It says, come. For all things are now ready. You know, as you look at the religious world of today, it doesn't matter what the religious world is, whether it's traditional religion or whether it's historic religion, whether it is evangelical religion, whether it is Pentecostal religion, whether it is charismatic religion. You know, the problem we have in many churches today, they say, come. Everybody says, come. Everybody says, come. They say, come. Come, come. Because healing is ready. And that's where they stop. Come. Because deliverance is ready. That's why they stop. They don't, they don't emphasize salvation. They don't emphasize restitution. They don't emphasize righteousness. They don't emphasize sanctification, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. They don't emphasize the second coming of the Lord. They don't emphasize the blessing we have in the family, one man, one wife, without uh, any part, any separation until this door's path. You just say, come, only healing. Come, only deliverance. Or some is prosperity. Come, prosperity is available. But the Lord said, don't just say that. Don't limit the blessings of the kingdom. Give the whole package and tell everybody, everything is now available. And that is the uniqueness of Deeper Life Bible Church. That's the uniqueness of this our church here. We don't give a one-sided gospel. We don't give just a limited gospel. We say everything from salvation to redemption to healing to deliverance to sanctification to holiness to everything you can think about the power to stand and the power to live a victorious life everything is now ready come all things are now ready and as we prepare for this coming retreat we're telling the people that whatever the need of your life may be and whatever the challenge of your life may be that now you can come if you're a sinner, you can come, you'll have salvation. If you're a backslider, you can come, you'll have restoration. If you're a believer, you can come, you'll have holiness and sanctification. If you're weak, you can come, you have the strength of the Lord and the power of the Lord. If you're a sorrowful believer, sad believer, dejected believer, depressed believer, you can come and you have the victory over your depression in Jesus' name. And if you have any need in your life, you can come. All your needs are going to be supplied because the Lord Jesus Christ himself said, the Master, saints, the Sabbath, out and he said, Come because all things are now ready. And uh, we're appealing to all the preachers, not only the preachers in deeper life, preachers everywhere. Anyone that is uh, studying the word of God with us, don't only preach, don't only preach salvation, don't only preach healing, don't only preach deliverance, preach everything and all the provision of Calvary, everything that the death of Christ has made available, and tell the people, come for all things are now ready. Let me show you what the Word of God says about all things being ready. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, Ephesians chapter 1, we're looking at verse 3. It says in verse 3, Blessed be the, Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. How could you miss that? He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Salvation, that's part of it. Sanctification, that's part of it. Righteousness, that's part of it. Redemption, that's part of it. Healing, that's part of it. Deliverance, that's part of it. Triumphant victory over temptation every day, every moment, that's part of it. The joy of the Lord 
Oh, that's part of it. Because Jesus Christ said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. That's why he says so back here that we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I pray that your blessing will not be limited. Your blessings will not be limited if your desires are not limited, if your aspirations are not limited, if your understanding of Calvary is not limited, and if your desires, what you want in the church, why you are remaining in the church, why you come to the church, if that desire is not limited, if it's as broad as the provision of Calvary, if your desires are as broad as the promises coming from Christ, if your desires are as broad as what the blood of Jesus has made available, then your expectation, which is your manifestation, will not be limited in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 8, I'm looking at verse 32. Romans chapter 8, we're looking at verse 32. It says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also? Tell me the next word. Tell me again. Freely give us what? All things. Brothers and sisters, I want you to look up here. You know, and sometimes it's very hard for you to stay in the very center of the will of God, the very center of the word and the teaching and the doctrine of the Bible. When you see many people around you doing this and doing this and doing that, and you think that, you know, of course they're doing this and they're doing that. And since the majority of people are doing that, you can be swayed up. Look at what it says over there, what I just read to you now. I want to emphasize that again. All things, all things, all things. He that spared not his own son, but he delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him, not outside him, with him, also freely give us all things. Once again, don't limit those all things. Don't limit Calvary. Don't limit Christ. Don't limit the provision that Jesus Christ made. Salvation is there. Forgiveness is there. Victory is there. Sanctification is there. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord is there. A victorious life day after day, month after month, and year after year. It's there. And the joy of the Lord for you to live above the waters and live a kind of a life that is triumphant, victorious. It's there. All things and the power of the Holy Ghost. Baptism in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues and the gifts of the Spirit. All things. Everything there. And the power to be able to accomplish everything the Lord has called to accomplish. That's what's available. And that's where what's, we have retreats. Other people also have maybe convention or congress or conference or whatever. We call it we call it retreat. Whatever name you call it, we make all things available. You'll get those all things in Jesus' name. But you know what? There's some places where they say, as we're coming to the retreat, you must fast for 21 days before you come. We don't say that. Pass for seven days before you come. We don't say that. Or pass for this number of hours before you come. And during that treaty, don't eat anything. Just stay there. And if you really want to have this and have this and have this, you must do it by the works of fasting. But you know, you know what it says here? Is it by fasting that we get all these things? Tell me out loud. How do we get them? How do we get them? Let me read that verse again, verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also, what? Freely give us all things free. I said it's free. I said it's free. Other people say it depends on sowing the seed, bringing money, much money. And so at the time, they have all those gatherings together in the morning, offering in the afternoon, offering in the evening, offering every time, offering. And the more offering you give and the more money you give and the more seed you sow, the more you'll be able to get the healing, even though the seed they are providing is even so limited. And yet you have to pay much money, much money, much money. Freely give us all things. What Calvary has provided is free. And you're going to have them in Jesus' name. We're looking at 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1. 
Second Peter chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 3. Second Peter chapter 1, we're reading it from verse 3. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. According as his divine power has given unto us, how many things? Wonderful, wonderful. He has given unto us all things. How could you ever be weak? How could you ever be falling into sin, falling and rising, falling and rising? How could you ever be a captive of the devil, a slave of the devil, when the Lord has provided everything from Calvary, from salvation to healing to power to sanctification to holiness to readiness to the, for the second coming? He has provided everything according as his divine power. He has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and things that pertain unto godliness. All things in the spiritual side, all things in the social side, all things in the physical side, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of what? Of the divine nature. Partakers of divine nature. See what Calvary has provided. He has even provided divine nature. The nature of God entering into us. That will give us a victory. Over every work of the devil. And then he says having escaped the corruption. That is in the world. Through laws. We are going to escape. We are looking at Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 32 and verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 32. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. What's Jesus talking about here? He's talking about food and clothing and shelter. And he says, after all these things do the Gentiles seek. How many people do you know today? That's all they're looking for. If they pray, that's all they're looking for. Protection from enemy, protection from the climate. Protection from this, protection from that, the shelter, the clothing, and the food. Maybe some money, and the money is still to buy food and shelter, clothing, and just all that. And Jesus said, this is the limit of what the Gentiles are looking for. And you must go beyond the Gentiles. You must go beyond the pagans. You must go beyond the idol worshippers. You must go beyond the sinners. And do not allow your, you know, all that you're seeking for. You're just seeking for material things and clothing and shelter and marriage and children. Just that. That's too limited. He's given us all things. And because he's given us all things, we're going to get all those things. That's why he says, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Then he says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Do you know that people don't put that first today? They don't put salvation first today? They don't put repentance, turning away from sin, turning away from idolatry, turning away from adultery, turning away from fornication, turning away from evil, turning away from stealing, turning away from cheating. They don't put that first today. They don't put holiness, sanctification, righteousness. They don't put that first. But Jesus said, the Lord is going to give us all things, but we must reorder our priority and make this the number one. Seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then he said, and all these things shall be added unto you. Praise the Lord. He will add all those things. Because he said in Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. Ask and it shall be given you. He will give you. Seek and ye shall find. You will find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. How many people will have their prayers answered during the retreat? Everyone, everyone, you included, praise the Lord. Everyone that hath received, he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you whom if his son has bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If he then been evil, how to know how to give good things to your children. How much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? He'll give us good things. We're told in Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. Matthew chapter 21, we're looking at verse 22. And all things, those are the words again, not just some things. 
not just a few things, not limited blessing, everything that you need, physical, spiritual, social, for your profession, for your family, in every area of your life, but make the spiritual things come first. And all things, verse 22, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. You are coming to the retreat and you are going to receive in Jesus' name. I come to point number two now. Point number two, proclamation by the servants of God. Proclamation by the servants of God. We're coming back to Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 17. Luke chapter 14, verse 17. And uh, now here is uh, where we know those who are real committed disciples of Christ. Here is where we know those who are real children of God. I want to remind you that we're not the only people reading the Bible in this country, in this continent of Africa. Many other people read the Bible too, but they read, but they don't obey. They don't do. It doesn't touch their lives. We're not the only people that go for, you know, gathering together, these great, great gatherings. Other people do too. But the word of God they hear, they don't carry out. But here is where we know those who are real children of God. Thank God I'm a real child of God. Are you a real child of God? The way we know a real child of God is when we hear the word of God and we tremble at that word. And we believe that word. And we trust that word. And we carry out that word. And we live according to that word. And if we're living according to the word of God, there should be somebody there like Enoch. If we're living according to the word of God, we're learning. There should be somebody there like Joseph. If we're living according to the word of God, we're learning. There'll be somebody there that the, that the neighbors are pointing. It looks like Daniel. If we're reading the word of God, obeying the word of God, we'll be looking like where Paul, where, where you know, Stephen. We'll be like people that are really following the Lord because we obey and we carry out the word of God that we learn. But, you know, if we're all there and we just read the Bible and, you know, nobody resents. Enoch, Elijah, Elisha, and nobody resembles David or Joseph or Paul or Peter. What kind of study will that be? The reason why we're studying the Word of God is that it will touch our lives and turn us around and change us. And somebody will say, I see the glory of God upon you because I see the obedience of the Word of God in your life. And you are better yet today than yesterday, brighter today than yesterday, and higher today than yesterday, and more obedient today than yesterday. I pray that that glory and that evidence of obedience to the Word of God will be upon our lives in Jesus name. And somebody there will be like Enoch. I said somebody will be like Daniel. Somebody there will be like Joseph. And then somebody will be like Peter and John. And when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And when you go out of the study and the action of your life and the things that you do as you become one of the children of God and one of the servants of God and you are carrying out everything that you have learned, somebody will take knowledge of you that he must have been at the Bible study because there is a change, there is a turning around, a transformation in his life. I pray to happen to us in Jesus' name. Be ye doers of the world and not hear us only. Now in Luke chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 17. And he sent a servant at supper time to say to them that were bidding, come for all things are now ready. He, he sent them. And as he sent them, he said, go tell them all things.